no matter the location. From OAKLA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. If you're looking for the latest news and rumors, you're in the right place. And if you aren't in the right place, well, this is called the Raiders Report. We go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Let's get into it, man. We're getting the show started off with a little Paul Gunther talking. Is Paul Gunther a good coach? It's an interesting question, right? Well, I'm going to give this one zero Chucky heads, tuck rule, tuck that. And I want you to let me know in the comments whether or not you think Paul Gunther is a good coach or not. So John Gruden was asked about Gunther and basically what he can do to make the defense better. Gruden kind of dodged the question a little bit and said that, hey, I think Gunther's a good coach and a lot of his issues can easily be fixed. Well, if that's the case, then why hasn't it been fixed in three years is my question. The other reason why I'm going to say that Paul Gunther's not a good coach is for the simple fact of every free agent signing that they brought in on defense has not worked out. Not just a little bit. It has not worked out at all. And if you want to talk about numbers, look at these. This is the Raiders' defense since Gunther took over in 2018. By the way, there's 32 teams in the NFL. It's 31st in points per game. Passer rating, quarterback, 31st in the National Football League. Sacks, 49. Think about that for a second. 36 games, 49 sacks. That's embarrassing. It is by far last in the NFL. And then takeaways, 34. Also, by far, last in the National Football League. If you want to consider yourself a legit team, you need to be able to force, force turnovers. You need to be able to get after the quarterback. And I'm sorry, if you're bringing in these free agents and they're not getting it done, maybe it's not the free agents. Maybe it is. But also, maybe it's the defensive coordinator who not only has been bad with the Raiders, was also not good with the Cincinnati Bengals. All I'm saying is, Maybe it's a Paul Gunther problem. I've also talked to a few Raiders players in the past. They said, yeah, his system, very, very confusing. So give me a Y for yes. Give me an N for no. Is Paul Gunther a good coach? I would be very, very surprised if I saw a single Y in the comments. If y'all want to type FPG, it means fire Paul Gunther. Hey, that's what this show here, the Raiders Report, is all about. No surprise, the live audience here is all typing their end for no. And I expect every single person that watches this on YouTube, that watches this on Facebook, to also be typing their end for no. Because let's face it, Paul Gunther is not a good coach. Now I'll tell you what, I got one heck of a deal going on with BetUS. If you guys like betting on the Raiders, if you want to bet, on all NFL games, you got to listen up right now. Go to chatsports.com slash Raiders and use promo code Raiders125. That gets you 125% deposit bonus. Mitch, what the heck does that mean? It means if you put down $100 on BetUS, they're going to give you $125 for free to bet with. Now, BetUS, they are the reason why I was able to make this show today. So I was like, Okay, instead of me, you know, let's say keeping the money that I get from BetUS, I want to give it back to Raider Nation. So BetUS gave me some money. I'm investing it into y'all, and I want to be able to give away some free jerseys. So go get started with BetUS, and then I'm going to give you a free Raiders jersey. It is as simple as that. You deposit $100 on BetUS. You get $125 for free to gamble with, basically. And then you get a $100 Raiders jersey. If you're interested in that offer, email Raiders at chatsports.com. I'll say it again because they've been going quick. Raiders at chatsports.com. If you have emailed me in the last 24 hours, I didn't check my email today. I will after the show, so don't panic. I will get to you. We've already had over 30 people do it, and over 30 people get a free jersey. Go ahead, Raiders at chatsports.com. Let's talk now about Derek Carr and... Here's a quote. I'm sick of losing. I'm sick of working as hard as I do. And as we do, and going out there and losing, I mean, it sucks. Enough is enough. And then here's the second part of the quote. The thing <laughs> that are hurting us in these close games is not them, it's us. That's the hard part to swallow. Well, maybe Manscaped should have been the sponsor of this one. So I went out there and I saw this little rumor here, and it's time to bench Derek Carr. That's what NBC Sports Northwest has to say, that it's time to bench Derek Carr. Before I tell you how many Chucky heads this is, let me know. B for bench, S for start. Should the Raiders bench Derek Carr? B for bench, S for start. I'll tell you what, man. Rumors like this 
is why I made the Chucky head rumor. Rumors like this is why I continue to say, tuck rule, tuck that. It makes no sense to bench Derek Carr. The article was titled, Derek Carr is sick of losing and Raider fans want Marcus Mariota. To the NBC staff that was too afraid to put the name down in the article as the writer, I'll tell you what. Y'all should be, maybe it was Colin Cowards. Maybe Colin Cowards wrote the freaking article because for you to list and, as a staff writer and not put your name behind something, it's cowardly. So if you're going to say that the Raiders should have benched Derek Carr, grow up, put your name behind it. Because for, for Mariota, who didn't look good in camp, and who, you're going to maybe go to Nathan Peterman? It's an absolute joke. Derek Carr isn't the problem. Now, I have ripped on Derek in the past, but for you to sit here and say the Raiders would be better off with Mariota and benching Derek, shame on you. Shame on you. So right now, here's what the quarterback depth chart looks like. And the other funny part, I think, here is uh, in the article, they're like, oh, Mariota should have came in in week four against the Bills. Newsflash, he is still yet to be activated. How can you place somebody that hasn't even been activated? You know what it is? It's you not doing your homework. Now, Derek has had his ups and his downs this year. Absolutely. Is he on a career path, I guess, for a completion percentage? Yes. Is he on career path for 32 touchdowns? Yes. Zero interceptions? Yes. But he does need to get better holding on to the football. Four fumbles, that would also be a career high. And really, probably should have five, maybe even six. But if you hear of anyone, and I mean anyone saying that Derek Carr should be benched, I want you to tweet at me, find me on Instagram, at MitchellRens365, because I'm going to tell them right to their face, you are so freaking wrong. All right, y'all, you know what to do here. I want every single person watching right now to type L if you love the Raiders. If you want to type Raider Nation for life, if you want to scream, I'm just going to warn you right now, Raiders! Go ahead and do it because that's what the Raiders report is all about. I want to be able to bring that tailgate vibe to you. I miss being able to hang out with my homies in uh, Oakland and even in Vegas, being able to tailgate and have a good time. But if you're looking for Raiders content every single day, I promise you, Las Vegas Raiders report is going to bring it to you. Click that big red button. Shout out to my guys, Callie, King, and Raymond watching right now on the live video. Next rumor, let's talk about it. Eric Weddle, should the Raiders give this man a phone call? I'll tell you what. If I had his phone number, I would have put it on the show today. This one's for Chucky Heads. Believe it, baby. And for the Raiders, you need some help in that secondary. Why? Well, you're going to be going up against Patrick Mahomes this week for one. And two, Eric Harris, he has not been good whatsoever. According to PFF, his grade 46.2. That's 70th best among all safeties in the National Football League. The other reason why I'm going to give Eric Weddle a call is 2019 he was pretty good. Now, sure, you're going to have to bring him out of retirement, but the Raiders do know a thing or two about bringing former Rams players out of retirement. They literally just did it a few months ago with Kyle Emanuel. So if I'm the Raiders, if I'm John Gruden, I say, hey, Kyle, why don't you figure it out? Call up your old teammate, Eric Weddle. Oh, yeah, Corey Littleton, why don't you call up your old teammate? Oh, yeah, hey, LaMarcus Joyner, why don't you call up your old teammate? Plus, Eric Weddle has a lot of experience playing in the AFC West. It is a perfect fit. 35-year-old, is he what he used to be in 2017, 2016? No. But you know what? He's a lot better than Eric Harris. So let's make this depth chart happen. Who says no? You have Nevin Lawson, who's filling in for the injured Damon Arnett. Yes, you still have LaMarcus Joyner at nickel. And then Eric Harris, he is a locker room guy. I do really, really like Harris. And he is a great special teams player. But if you want to be considered a legitimate threat, not just in your own division, in the AFC and the National Football League, you can't have Eric Harris starting at safety. So go out, get Eric Weddle. We know Gruden loves veterans. Put him in at safety, and then Eric Harris can just play as a run stopper. That's where he's best at. So we've heard a lot of talk about Eric Weddle. There's also been some other names floated out there, and these names, they're free agents. Earl Thomas, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Eric Reed. They're all free agents. Eric Weddle, you'd have to bring him out of retirement. So we're going to play a little game here, all right? Make sure that it's going to be like the Price is Right Raiders Report style. Pick one to sign. Type ET for Earl Thomas. Type ER for Eric Reed. Type HC for Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Or you can type EWU for Eric Weddle. Let's go now probably to some of the reason why y'all started watching today's show. Mo Hurst and some of the breaking news that was around him. So Hurst, pretty interesting here with uh, 
what happened to him. Is he on the COVID list? Yeah, this one's for Chucky Heads. Believe it, baby. He needs to pass two tests in order to play again. Now, we still don't know if he has COVID. All we know at this current juncture is that he's been put on the COVID-19 reserve list. Now, this is obviously going to be a huge loss for this team because before today's show, my story was going to be Mo Hurst needs to start. Why? He's right now the fourth best defensive tackle, according to PFF, with an 89.4 grade. For those of you wondering if that's good or not, it's better than Aaron Donald. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Last week, he played in only 57% of the snaps. And right now, what you see on screen is where he and the rest of the Raiders rank according to PFF grades. I mean, it's really only been Mo Hurst and Jonathan Hankins. No other player has really been able to step up. Plus, Daniel Ross, he's hurt. Kendall Vickers, he stinks and he's hurt. And Malik Collins, who played in, I don't even know, 41% of the snaps last week, he's been horrible. Also, you see the rankings, NFL rankings. I mean, this is out of 165 defensive tackles. Yeah, it's not good whatsoever. So, Mo, hopefully it's all good. Hopefully you get two, po or two, two negative tests. You can get back out on the football field for week five against the Chiefs. Because uh, if, if the Raiders don't have Mo, the one player who's been able to force the most quarterback pressures this year with 13, next closest is Carl Nassib with 10. Yeah, it might be a really, really long Sunday. Okay, so if we potentially lose Mo, could we be getting some snacks to Vegas? Maybe like a Snickers bar, a Reese's? No, it's not even close to what I'm talking about. Snacks Harrison coming to Vegas. I'm going to give it one Chucky head and a small shred of truth. The reason why it's just one and not zero Chucky heads is because if you keep losing players on your defensive line, Maybe you at least give him a phone call. And we know that Harrison is visiting the Seahawks. Apparently, he's going to visit the Packers on Wednesday. The Raiders need to do their due diligence, and they need to at least call this man. Now, he is nowhere near his prime. But if you're looking for another solid run stopper, yes, Jonathan Hankins is basically, I would say, still probably a better version of Damon Harrison. But they're still pretty close, where Harrison can really only play those run stopping roles. But you need bodies. And at the end of the day, you don't have bodies at defensive tackle, and he would be better than Malik Collins, who has just been terrible. I mean, he's been, he's been bad, guys. I mean, there's no other way to say it. He played him 41% of the snaps in week four. Really, what the Raiders need to do is take that 41% and make it way, way less because he has not been good whatsoever. John Gruden came out and said that he's trying to do too much. Well, you know what? Maybe do a little bit less, Malik, because it's not working out. Yeah, apparently he's battling a shoulder injury as well, but... If you'd ask me right now, hey, do I want Malik Collins or do I want, you know, Snacks Harrison, the way Malik's been playing, I'm probably going to have to go out and say give me some Snacks Harrison. Now, y'all, I do have a little bit of a favor to ask you. This is my girlfriend, Alex. Today is her birthday. If you could, go on Instagram at JustAlexSophia. Wish her a happy birthday. If you don't want to go to her IG, I posted a picture of her and I. There's some videos of us there. Please Wish her a happy birthday. If you guys want to type HBD, she is going to be watching today's show. She told me I wouldn't put her on the show, so I was like, okay, hold my beer, bet. I'm going to put her on. Babe, love you. Happy birthday. All right, let's go to the next thing here. Raiders losing a draft pick. Oh, man, really? Really? One Chucky had small shred of truth. Then this one is from the woke loser himself, Mike Florio. Now, he's kind of... He kind of has a point here. Now, the Raiders could actually lose a draft pick. If you remember, Roger Goodell, when he first broke out the rules around COVID, said, hey, if a team kind of violates the rules over and over again, they can take charge. And what has Goodell proven every single year? That, if he wants to do it, he can do it. Now, let me just say this. If the Raiders do get punished and lose a draft pick, I would be shocked. But if there's been one NFL team that has struggled a little bit, it has been the Raiders already racking up $565,000 in fines. The most recent fines have come from Darren Waller's event. So what you see on screen right now are the players that were fined by the NFL during the event. Waller was fined the most with 30 k The other nine players, Derek Carr included, were fined 15000 So I don't know if you all know this or not, but when an NFL team finds a team or when somebody gets fined, those normally go to charities. 
the Darren Waller Foundation is doing something great. And instead of the story being around all the great things that Darren Waller is doing for kids who are battling a lot of the issues that he faced where alcohol and drug abuse, instead it's been focused on the Raiders players getting fined. So what I want every single person to do today is seriously go to Twitter, go to Instagram, yell at the NFL and say, you know what, if you're going to take $165,000 away from a man who raised $300,000 for kids... Like, get out of here. Donate that money back to the Darren Waller Foundation. That's what you should do. Like, it pisses me off that this is the conversation and not sure. Like, I get it. They didn't wear their mask, and they should have. But can the story be around how they raised $300,000 for kids? Please? Please? So, like if you agree here, okay? And please take a screenshot of this. Put it on Twitter. I'll retweet it because... The Darren Waller Foundation should get the $165,000 that the NFL fined Derek Carr, Waller, and the eight other players. I don't know, man. I, I was super mad. If you agree with me here, please like the video. I'm not trying to say that COVID's not a legit thing and they shouldn't have wore their masks. They should have. But come on, let's be real. The real story here is that that money should go to the Darren Waller Foundation. If you agree with me, like the video, post it on Twitter, put it on Instagram, at me, and I'll make sure that I share it as well.